They might not land a relationship. They might not get justice for a heinous murder. They might not stop the world from being destroyed by the evil villain's microwave gun, which is set to the popcorn setting, which it explicitly tells you not to use. There are, of course, dozens of ways to ruin a novel. You could pour acid on it. You could use a bunch of adverbs. You could hack at it indiscriminately with an ax. Today, I'm sharing five different pervasive issues that affect your plot and characters and can be sometimes a little bit difficult to put your finger on. They can creep in without you noticing, and if you're not careful, they will ruin your novel. If you want to hear about more ways to ruin your novel, you can subscribe to my channel. Wait, no, I don't think that's right. All right, way number one to ruin your novel, have a protagonist that lacks agency. Character agency is essentially how proactive the character is in taking action and how much those actions really drive the plot. You want to avoid situations where the protagonist is simply reacting to events or where the plot moves forward without any real influence from your protagonist. Readers generally like characters who take action. Heroism often requires actions, so it's important that your hero is, you know, heroic. A character can still display agency in situations where they don't have a lot of control. They might be imprisoned or taken hostage or living in a rigid caste or cultural setting that limits their freedom in some way. You can still have a character display agency in those sorts of situations. They can be trying to escape or not cooperating with their hostage takers or butting up against the limits of their cultural norms of the setting that they live in. You can also have situations where characters could take action, but they choose not to. They might be depressed, they might not believe in themselves, whatever it is. That's different because the character is still displaying agency by choosing not to do something, and that should be made clear. And often in these situations, the arc for that character is them becoming more proactive over the course of the story. Your protagonist should be taking actions and making choices which affect the plot. They can fail, they can struggle, random crap can happen to them that they have to deal with, but they should always be taking action. If you have a protagonist that isn't, it can easily ruin your novel. Way number two to ruin a novel, have low or poorly defined stakes or stakes that the reader doesn't care about. That's right, if you're trying to make a vegan novel, it's not going to work. It has to have stakes. And none of this lab-grown crap. Something needs to die. Stakes are basically what the protagonist stands to lose if they don't resolve the conflict of the story. They might not land a relationship. They might not get justice for a heinous murder. They might not stop the world from being destroyed by the evil villain's microwave gun, which is set to the popcorn setting, which it explicitly tells you not to use. If the stakes of your novel are poorly defined or too low, or if the reader doesn't care about them, then you're going to have problems. And this problem is not necessarily solved by just raising the stakes. There are a lot of stories where the entire world could be destroyed if the protagonist doesn't succeed and people still don't care about them. High stakes really only matter if they affect characters that the reader cares about. I think the best piece of advice for stakes is making sure that the reader gets invested in your characters. If they like your characters, then anything your characters consider are important, the reader is likely to feel is important. Way number three to ruin a novel, have character or plot arcs that move way too quickly. I read the first book of a moderately popular fantasy series recently, and the protagonist was paired with a really unlikable character that they didn't get along with. They spent the entire first half of the book in direct conflict with this character, and then in like the middle of a random chapter, it was like the author flipped a switch. Suddenly the pair was moving very quickly towards a shipping situation. They started using cute pet names for each other. They started showing devout concern where before there was only hostile aversion. Don't do this. Character change and plot arcs require the right amount of time to progress. It's not like flipping a switch. Character changes feel jarring when they happen instantaneously or come out of nowhere you almost want the reader to barely notice the changes happening or to just barely hint at the changes before they begin to really take shape. Subplots and even parts of a bigger plot need time to grow and develop. They shouldn't just spring up and resolve in a few pages. 
and the bigger the plot is, the more time it needs to be given to progress. Moving too quickly or too slow with your plot or character arcs can very easily ruin a novel, and ruin it fast. Way to ruin a novel number four, have a story that lacks structure. I'm generally not a huge fan of plot structures. Five point structure, the seven point structure, the 18 beat structure, the 19 beat structure, three act structure, Phytag's pyramid, the hero's journey. I mean, they're fine, but I find you can smush pretty much any story to fit into pretty much any plot structure and they're not something that I've ever found very useful when it comes to actually writing a novel. That being said, one thing that plot structures do very well is define the different purposes of different parts of the story and the different points that you should pay attention to and make sure that your story has. Good novels are not random, they have structure. Conflicts get introduced and resolved at specific points to create specific emotional reactions in the reader. The tension and intensity of the narrative builds and dissipates in a very contrived way. Good writers do this on purpose, not leaving things up to chance. This is deliberate, it doesn't happen randomly. If your novel lacks structure, if you aren't paying attention to how the story's events flow and weave together, then it's likely not going to be engaging. And I have to admit that plot structures can be a helpful way to figure these things out. There are specific reasons that events often happen in specific orders, and plot structures do a good job of laying this out. If your novel doesn't fit well into any sort of plot structure, even very loosely, or you haven't given much thought to how events rise and dissipate over the course of the story, that could potentially ruin it. And lastly, way to ruin a novel number five, keep the reader in the dark. Writing is ultimately about giving the reader information. I mean, that's the entire point. I think one major thing that separates a good writer from a mediocre writer is knowing how much information to give the reader. A lot of novels start with the reader in the dark. They might not know things about the characters or the world, there's rules that they aren't told, or explanations for events might not be given yet. Doing this well creates a sense of intrigue and curiosity. Doing it poorly leads to boredom and confusion. You don't want to reveal too much information because you're going to overload the reader and not create any sense of curiosity. Giving the reader too much information is going to destroy all of this intrigue and the novel's not going to have any interest to it. Giving not enough information is going to make it hard to connect with the story and engage with it at all. Doing this well creates a sense of intrigue and curiosity. Doing it poorly leads to boredom and confusion. Striking the balance between keeping the reader curious and not overloaded is a skill especially if you're writing speculative fiction where the learning curve is often quite steep. It's a process of creating questions for the reader and then slowly leaking out the answers over the course of the plot. Making sure that the reader is interested in those questions can take a lot of work. Ideally, every line you write creates this curiosity, whether it's simply how the other character is going to respond to a line of dialogue or about a major plot arc. Every part of your story should create curiosity that will pull the reader ahead and make them want to continue reading into the next part. If your story doesn't do this, if it gives the reader too much information that they lose this curiosity, or it doesn't give them enough to create any curiosity, then you've got a ruined novel. Just like this video might be ruined because it's over. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you can think of other things that can potentially ruin a novel for you, please leave a comment down below and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.